do our immune systems deserve the rave reviews they're getting for finally fighting and destroying certain cancers? The best answer is, it depends. It depends on the patient and it depends on the type of cancer in question. Drs. Julie Bramer and Victor Valculescu of the Bloomberg Kimmel Institute for Cancer Immunotherapy weigh in on the challenges this treatment presents. Game Changer, Game Challenge. Immunotherapy, I think, in my mind, is a game changer for our patients in the clinic. However, not everyone is responding. I think for at least our lung cancer patients, for those patients where it is working, it works for a very long time, much more compared to, or much longer compared to chemotherapy. However, it's not the only answer for our patients. Yeah, and I mean, I think one of the challenges with both targeted therapy as well as immune therapy is that uh, patients respond and then some of them ultimately uh, relapse. And one of the challenges we've had is understanding why patients respond and why they don't respond to begin with and then why when they even they do respond ultimately the disease comes back. We're beginning to see that with lung cancer and as you know we're working together to try to understand the mechanisms of that. Um, part of that we think will be through the understanding of the molecular changes inside um, of lung cancer uh, and what are the genetic characteristics, what are the differences in the blueprint of these cancer cells that makes uh, cancers initially respond to the therapy and then ultimately what makes these cancers change over time to make them less responsive to either targeted uh, or immune therapy. I think people do have to realize that there is so much more to go. Um, it's sort of like being very early on in the targeted therapies as well as early on in chemotherapy, I think, where you see that glimmer of hope. But I think the difference for immune therapy is that when you do have a response, it lasts for a very long time. And intuitively, in our minds, it just seems more natural to use your own immune system yeah. rather than using a drug to kill off the cancer. But I think I, again, it's not the only answer for our no, patients. I, I think it's extremely exciting as well. There is a great appeal to immune therapy, just like you said, because I think you're, you're thinking about using the body's own immune system to fight off the cancer by targeting many things that can be different about a cancer cell compared to uh, the normal counterparts that you have. So I totally agree. Intuitively, it makes a lot of sense. It's likely that this kind of therapy in the long term will prove one of the most effective that we've had to date against cancer and against lung cancer in particular. And then of course I think the other thing that we could all be excited about is combining these therapies together. Right, and I think being able to, our long term goal is to be able to personalize this type of therapy just like the targeted therapies are, are being done for today. That's our goal is to be able to tell each patient you should be on this or you should be on that. And then short term even, immune therapy is not right for you. We think that the likelihood of response is extremely low. You really need to focus on these other types of therapies. And we need other therapies as well. Now it's a little bit of, a, uh, of an exaggeration in the sense that it's, we're very precisely able to measure a lot of things. We can't yet precisely treat everything perfectly. But with targeted therapies and with immune therapy and in parallel beginning to understand why some patients are responding and others are not, personalizing the approach I think is, is bringing up opportunities to do this in a way that just was just totally unimaginable I'd say a decade or certainly a generation ago. Right, right. It's, it's really exciting. Team science is important and certainly trying to figure out how best to flow the information from the clinic to the lab and from the lab to the clinic. One of the exciting things I think we have today is the ability to connect very quickly and to flow data back and forth and to work with other labs and other um, members within Hopkins to, to use the best science and to focus it on understanding the key parts of cancer that we don't already know and use that in actual, in, in actual patient care. I think also, I, I think within our clinic, you know, bringing the patients onto that team, you know, because yeah. they certainly know their history more than we do and being able to show them what 
they have helped contribute to. I think that's something special that we also bring it from the clinical side as well as the research side. But we also work with pathologists, we work with immunologists, we work with uh, statisticians, computational biologists, bioinformaticians, as well as molecular biologists. And we do this all within the cancer research buildings uh, here uh, at Hopkins as well as in the clinical buildings at Hopkins and at Bayview. So it's, it's actually, I think, essential to move this field forward.